This is the Mazda RX-7, the number 74, Team Arniture that raced in the 1994 24 Hours of Le Mans. And this, by TSM standards, is a highly detailed model. And I'm pretty sure already you can see something that stands out, which is this true mesh or perforated grill. And I really like this one, especially how the Mazda is hidden behind it. It's a very nice effect. And then you also have this one on the side. This was done for the additional cooling of these exhaust outlets that run through the side of this car. Again, just very well done, very well detailed. The shape of the model is very correct to the real thing. The exhaust outlets that you see here and the heat shield, they are photo etched metal items, which is really nice. The wheels, very nicely detailed. I like this deep dish. I like the polished uh, steel rim. Looks very nice. You can see the brakes and the brake calipers in the background. Those are very nice as well. That of course will go for the front and the back. The tire scripting is very accurate to the real thing. There are valve stems. They're not the most detailed valve stems, but they are present, which says a lot about this model. You can see the attachment latches for some of the panels. Those are really nicely done as well. They do look like metal. They're not. They're painted, but they look very accurate as well. So moving on to the front of this model. Again, there's that absolutely stunning mesh grille with the Mazda hidden behind it. You have this very nicely done tow hook. The lights are very nicely done, shaped correctly to the real thing. Lenses are also very well done. There's not a lot of excess glue. They're attached. The lens cover anyway is attached very nicely. It definitely fits perfectly along the grooves or the lines of the car. Same thing for the lower fog lights, as we like to call them. They are lensed very nicely done as well. Moving on to the back of the model. If you're familiar with RX-7s, then these tail lights are very accurate, and they are. You have your fuel outlet there, or inlet, I should say. So yeah, the back of the model is very nicely done. You got that nice little photo etched piece of moving back and forth. You can see the reflection there. On the top of this model, you can see that there's again, a lot of nice detail. You have these vents that are here on the sides and these are actually true vents. By the way, this is a resin sealed model, so none of the parts do open. One of my favorite, next to the uh, photo etched mesh grills, is definitely all this plumbing and piping and scaffolding that's in the back. It's a very well done piece. Another thing I want to point out also was, is you have the um, window stays, if that's what you want to call them, on the top, and those are also nicely photo etched as well. Another look at that side exhaust, which is a true full metal photo etched piece. This beautiful Mazda that's hidden behind the front air dam, again covered in that mesh piece. It's a closer look of the interior. It's a very well detailed interior. You have your full gauge cluster, all of your fluids. Very, very well detailed shifter. 
the seat is a full six point harness seat belt and it does have photo etched buckles and that is of a seat craft brand the seat is sparko the dashboard is very nicely detailed it does not have all of the true colors of the real model but it is very nicely done for what it is In 94 Le Mans 24 hour race car Mazda RX-7 Our last car is the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette C8R that participated in Le Mans and this is a very aggressive car as you can see it's probably one of the most aggressive Le Mans cars produced by GM and the design of the new C8 definitely has a lot to do with that um, it is the first car with the engine moved to the back instead of the front of the car and it's a beautiful design this TSM model does have great details. You can see the overall shape is very accurate to the real thing. The front end is very nicely done. The light detail is pretty good. What you see here is this front end cover that is just that it's a cover. And that is not accurate to the real thing. It should be a mesh or photo etched grill, which it's not. It's a plastic shield, unfortunately. Because overall, this model is stunning. I wouldn't change anything else about it. The light detail at the bottom is very, very well done. If you move to the back of the model, you couldn't ask for better tail lights. Those are very accurate. No question about that. This part right here actually has a true grill. There's a black piece right behind it, but it is a true grill, which makes you wonder why wouldn't they have done that for the front of this model? The exhaust outlets, I like that they are colored the way that they are because there is another model that's done by GT Spirit and they do not have these the appropriate color or the correct color they're just silver which they're not on the real thing they are darkened like that just a quick upper or top view again this is a very very nicely detailed model I love the mirror detail. There is a hint of carbon fiber on the outer edge or the inner edge of the mirror, which is very nice. The overall paint is very, very nicely done. I have found no issues with the paint at all on this model. So let's take a look at the interior. This is a sealed closed resin model. So the most you're going to get out of seeing the interior is through the thin plastic windows that are used. And for what you can see, there is a lot of electronics that you can see there. I do like all the use of the colors and textures. It gives it a sense of realism. Even all the switches on the panel are colored, which is really, really good. I'm sure that because these are done specifically for IMSA and at top speed put their full efforts on making sure that these models looked very good. Now just like with their Ford GT Le Mans race car, a lot of the interior details are all just this monochrome black which is not accurate to the real thing, but they do include all, include all the important details that you would find in an actual race car. They're just all colored black which is unfortunate, but 
I'm honestly not that surprised at this price point. You have your roll cage that's there. This is really nice. I don't see a plastic cut line, which is really good. Because that really takes the realism out of the model. The back of it, as you can see, it's darkly tinted, so it doesn't really give you much to see. But again, I'm very sure on the real car, as you can see here, everything is just blacked out. This would have been a much better piece to look at through this darkened window if there were some colors on some of these parts instead of them all being just a flat molded black. It's a closer look at that only mesh grill that's in the back, which is really nice. Which goes back to why wouldn't they have done this for the front of this car? If you move to the front, again, very nicely done light detail. But then you have this grill that is not accurate. The wheels are very nicely detailed, lots of textures and different types of plastics that are used. There is a valve stem there. It's a small dimple, but it's a valve stem. And you have the back ones as well, which are nicely done. The C8R by, again, top speed. Now I'm going to move to my conclusions. Well, I hope you enjoyed those two models. Yes, the roots of those models are very different, but they are both spectacular and great race cars. This is my final journey into um, top speed TSM models as far as the whole point in this series was is to point out, unlike many other model companies, top speed needs to get to the point of where their models are very consistent along with their price points, which is the biggest problem that I have with top speed. I'm paying the same amount of money for a car that has zero perforated grills, zero valve stems, for one that has perforated grills and valve stems. And that's just not making sense to me. And it kind of disappoints, especially if you're pre-ordering something and you're not sure exactly what it will look like because you're afraid it might sell out. And then you get it and you're disappointed. So that was the whole purpose of this video, or these videos, I should say. The one thing I can say is that they are improving with their models. I have noticed more and more of their newer offerings are becoming out with full details with the perforated grills, which is a great thing. I also mentioned my previous videos, they have a contract with IMSA. That is the American Sports Car Racing Series. In fact, if you know, about two weeks ago was the uh, Daytona 24 hours. So pretty much every American car, the important ones anyway, will probably be a TSM model. Obviously the winning uh, Acura will be a TSM model and you can expect a very good quality. Now where that quality comes is another matter. I have proven in my previous videos that they were using Spark to make some of their models, especially their Porsche model. The base was exactly the same. The mold was exactly the same. There was no difference except for, of course, the livery on it. Other than that, you could have switched liveries and it would have been the same model. There is nothing wrong with outsourcing. It's just, again, if you're going to do that, there has to be some separation price point from your internal offerings, i.e. TSM Top Speed Factory versus Sparks Factory, because it is disappointing to pay the same amount of money for something that has a lot of detail and then pay for, again, for something the same price with a much lower detail. So that was the point in this. Now I can say their newest offerings have gotten a lot better. Most of them, not all of them, but most of them do have now the perforated grills, valve stems, so there is a lot more detail. And I'm pretty sure through time the company will evolve as well. It just has to grow, it just has to get more sales. I mean, you need money to make these things. So 
Um, I do like the company. I do like most of their products. So this is definitely not a slam against top speed. It's just one of those criticisms that I'm very, very sure that they're hearing from me and other fans of their models. Please like and subscribe. That is the best way I'm going to know that you're enjoying these videos. I appreciate your time. Next time will be one of my spotlight news and there will be a lot of great information in there as well. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.